We really need an iron farm and some farmers to trade with for golden carrots and maybe some clerics. And what about a raid farm? We're going to need villagers for that too. So what am I doing tearing down my bedroom, you might ask? Welcome back, Minecrafters. After a somewhat clunky experience with our makeshift villager breeder in the last episode, it's painfully obvious that if we're going to get anywhere in this world, it's time to build a proper villager breeder. And I don't want it to be some ugly villager breeder that sticks out like a sore thumb. So it will have to be disguised inside a building that looks like it belongs here in town. And I think I've got the perfect idea for it. Well, maybe not the perfect idea, but close enough for me anyways. So I've gathered some resources, cleared out some space, and laid out the outline of our build. But before I get wrapped up in this, I want to mention if you're interested in learning how to build the villager breeder I'm using in this episode, be sure to check out Logical Geek Boy's tutorial on it. I'll put a link in the description below. And while I'm working on the carrot farm portion of the villager breeder, I want to share with you something I'm, I'm really excited about. I'm adding a question or comment of the day feature to each episode. Starting with this episode, if you leave a comment or a question in the comments below, I'll choose one and feature it in a question of the day segment of the next episode. And I hope this will really be a fun way to interact with you guys and you'll get a chance to be featured in future episodes. And it doesn't matter if it's a question it can just be a comment so here's your chance to be the first to be featured in the question of the day in the next episode of this series all you have to do is leave a comment below and i'm so excited to read what you guys post and look forward to sharing it in the next video now back to the villager breeder i really don't want an ugly villager breeder sitting right here in the middle of our village and i was stuck for a while on what could be built around it and you know, what would fit in with our theme? I know it would uh, have to be pretty large to cover up the whole breeder, and that got me to thinking maybe something like a church could work. But then I had a flash of brilliance. What about a school? Villagers come out of school all edumacated and stuff and ready to go to work. Of course, they might not be happy with the jobs I give them, like being scared to death by a zombie over and over again in an iron farm, but hey, at least they'll have a job, right? What else are they going to do? Wander around like village idiots? So now that the villager breeder is done, let's get busy with the schoolhouse build. While I'm putting up the walls for the schoolhouse, I wanted to show you something I'm so excited to have found earlier while gathering the resources for this build. I ventured out into the dark oast forest near my base um, because I didn't want to chop down the trees, you know, right next to the base. It's already in on the edge of a plains biome and there weren't many trees around it to begin with. So I didn't want to strip it completely of trees. Honestly, this isn't that far from my base, and I have to say this is a sight for sore eyes. I'm in need of more gold for golden apples, and a Badlands biome is just the perfect place to find some. Now if we can find some mine shafts on the surface, we'll be in business. Aside from the gold, it's great to have this nearby because terracotta is a great building block to build with. So I'm going to click some of that as well. And, you know, what's your favorite building block to build with when you're building? Leave a comment below and let me know. So I've been exploring for about 15 minutes and I've yet to find a mine shaft or a cave on the surface, which honestly, in my experience, seems a, a bit unusual. I guess if I can't find one soon, I'll have to resort to, I don't know, maybe doing some strip mining because I think that'll work in this biome. Um, oh, okay. Well, that looks promising. Let's over, head over there and uh, let's check that out. Right, now we've got us a cave, so let me get some torches ready and light this place up. All right, now we're off to a good start. I see some gold and it looks like there's a mine shaft up here as well. Yep, that's a mine shaft. So the, so the goal here would be get a couple of stacks of gold and get out of here without dying. Be careful of that gravel. I'm not going to dig out that gold there because the ceiling will collapse on me. 
Oh, wouldn't you know it? It's just my luck, a spider spawner, or should I say just my bad luck? like a cave spider. Ooh, look at that shot. All right, let's grab this. Ouch! That made me jump. All right, Mr. Skeleton, feel the wrath of my hot shot. Gotcha. Yeah, look at these spider webs. Definitely a cave spider spawner here. And before I get involved with that, let's light this area up some more so I don't get snuck up on by a creeper because that definitely would ruin my day. Just check back here and take this little fella out. Hmm, that is definitely a lot of webs. There might actually be two spawners here. Let's see if I can get in here and light this up and stop the spawns. Run away, run away. Okay, so I got one torch on it. I wonder if that's enough to stop the spawns. Oh, um, I better eat. I can't tell you how many times I've not been paying attention to my health and forgotten to eat. That's a bad idea, my friends. You know what? I think I'm going to be better off finding another cave to explore. We've already built a spider spawner in a previous episode and I don't need to die this far from home and lose my stuff. Let's grab this and head out of here. Well, my friends, I have to say it's been a pretty good trip. Um, we didn't die and I found a few more caves and did some strip mining as well. And I've got almost three stacks of gold ore and my inventory is getting kind of full. So I think it's time to head home. I'll see you when we get there. So with our little gold gathering adventure out of the way, let's jump into a quick time lapse and finish off this villager breeder schoolhouse. This is probably the biggest above ground build I've done, at least in terms of the overall area. And I played around quite a bit in a creative world, trying to come up with a build that would cover this villager breeder and hopefully look good and finally settled on this oversized schoolhouse. And since it's basically a big rectangle, I really want to be sure to take the extra effort uh, to detail it as much as I can. So I'll come back and add a bit of texture to the roof with some dark oak planks and maybe some stripped dark oak logs. Plus I'll add some rooftop structures to give it more detail. And I definitely want to add texture to the walls. So mix in some stone, smooth stone, cobblestone, maybe some mossy cobblestone and andesite. And then add some planter boxes under the windows and around the front door area. Another thing I want to do is add a little playground off the side door. So I'll fence that area in, add some landscaping, and I want to try something with armor stands that I think will add a nice touch and be really cute. 
also uh, add some texture stone roads and maybe some other details that I think will really complete this build. So now it's time for the big reveal. We've textured out the roof and the walls and we've added some other details as well. So here it is guys. As you can see, we put some structures on the rooftop and added some flags, which I think came out really cool as well as add quite a bit of detail to the exterior. So if we hop around here, you can see we put in some roads and I've got to finish texturing those, but we've kind of got the basic layout. In fact, we're going to start stretching these out through the whole village here, but we add a little wagon out front just to kind of fill in this space. And you can see the planter boxes with the texturing on the walls uh, going under each window. And over here, we've got the little playground. Let me show you the front first. So we added some planter boxes and some lights and I grabbed a bell to be our little school bell there. And we've got the door. We go inside here. We've just got the villager breeder and I'll show you how this works. But if you're interested in building this, like I said, it's a logical geek boy uh, design. And I've got the link down in the description over here though. We've got the farmers and you can see they're actually, uh, actually trying to make a baby, but I've got the beds closed off so they don't know they're there. So they can't make any babies, but once they do, if this is open and I'll go ahead and open this. Now they know the beds are there. The baby gets born. He'll run across here thinking he can get to the beds and he'll drop in here and he'll stay down here while he's growing up. Once he grows up, his head hits this water and it pulls him up and it brings him into this area where you can see we've got, I don't know, four or five of them all set up. And then when I've got the, when I'm ready and I need one, I've got some mine carts loaded in here. I just hit the button, it goes up and there we go. We got ourselves a villager all captured. So it works great, but as you can see, I haven't really done much with the inside here. And I think maybe what I'll do is come in and add some sort of a floor and um, maybe some lights, but really this is just a villager breeder and this whole structure is just designed to kind of hide it and make it look like it's part of the village. Oh, I almost forgot. Over here, I had a little side yard area that goes out into a playground. And as you can see, we added some armor stands and you can make a miniature. So I've got like some little school kids out here and you can see this guy, I still need to give him a shirt. So, um, he's running around shirtless right now, but I've got him carrying a little stick and this guy's carrying a little rock and they're playing and all. And then I've got sort of a faux gate here just to look like it's open, but that's really just there. So I can get in and out here pretty easy, but um, up top, we've added some texturing to the roof and I added these little structures here and let me jump back here and we'll jump up here real quick, ignore my chess monster, but I had some structures up here with some flags blowing in the wind. And I think that really helps, um, out with the detail of this, but here's a good side view. And of course we continued all this texturing and the planter boxes all the way around the building. So it's that way on all four sides. Um, but overall, I don't know. Let me know what you think. I'm, I'm really quite happy with it. And like I said, it's probably the biggest building I've built. Um, used to, used to being in a hardcore world where I've played most of my time and you don't really try to make things beautiful. You just try to make them functional. So I've got a lot of learning to do, but other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. So you don't miss my next episode. And until then craft on my dudes.